And we're going to get to our top news stories of the day. And Chris Matthews, I just want to start with the news about Nancy Pelosi stepping down from her leadership position, staying in Congress. But uh, when she made this announcement, it was a big moment. It's the end of an era, uh, really. Um, And also, she was groundbreaking in her leadership role being the first woman Speaker of the House, second in line to the presidency. And it was delivered to an audience which had some Republicans in it, but they weren't clapping. Some didn't show up, you know, and Democrats, of course, supporting her. And she made a a pretty beautiful speech. There are um, some achievements in her life that she will put at the top of her list, health care. Like it or not, she she was pivotal. Literally, it wouldn't be there. It wouldn't have passed without her. Um, so if you could talk a bit about her leg- legacy and also this moment of gracelessness. Yeah, when uh, I worked for Tip O'Neill for six years, for 10 years, mm. not six years, he was in for 10. And um, I remember the last night he was speaker, uh, the uh, Eleanor Kelly, his secretary, put together a little get together in the back room. And nobody else knew about this. It was Bob Dole, it was Bob Michael. Uh, the Democratic leaders, they all were sitting around like sitting Shiva. They were like sitting together, like ending this career. And they were drinking coffee. And I remember helping Bob Dole, uh, Bob Dole get his coffee because he couldn't use both hands. And, and it was a very personal thing. Huh. It was very bipartisan. And I watched yesterday, even that wonderful line when, when Pelosi talked about, and through the night, our flag was still there. Yes. What a poetic line yes. from, from the Star Spangled Banner. And, and, then, and the Republicans at the corner, right, in the leadership corner, they did stand up and applaud. They did, those few guys in the corner. Mm-hmm. But I didn't see the whole rank and file of them. No. And, that, and that is really bad, because why can't you salute someone who served in the House for eight years as leader and leader of the Democrats for 20? Why wouldn't you want to be there to, to celebrate that? That's your life. Yeah. She's leading your life. Yes. And you can't celebrate that? You can't find something? That's uh, the part that hurts. There's something that's really sick about politics, and I think it has to do with money. Today's big surprise. politics. You give money to a politician, and you want him to be your, or her to be your friend. And then you don't want to see her or him hanging around with the other side, because how can she be friends with them if, she's, if I give her money and she's my friend? It's a sickness. It's about money. Stop thinking you're buying friendship when you give somebody some money. That's when they gotta, they got to stop. So back in 2019, I worked on an MSNBC documentary about House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, tracing her rise in politics to her legislative battles on Capitol Hill. And one of the moments to highlight how she ran circles around then-President Trump, here she is talking about that. The second speakership for Pelosi has been the truly important one. It has pitted her against President Trump as the leader of the Democratic Party. The fight started the month before she was sworn in, when she and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer met with President Trump about a deal that would include building the wall he would proposed on the Mexican border. The president so often just makes stuff up, you know, numbers, facts, etc. And we said, we're going to confront him. We're going to say, not in a harsh way, we're going to confront him. If I needed the votes for the wall in the House, I would have them in one session, it would be done. To those who'd questioned Pelosi's ability to duel with President Trump, the way she conducted herself in the Oval Office was a turning point. But there are no votes in the House, a majority of votes, for a wall, no matter where you start. But we had planned a sort of one-two punch ahead of time, but it worked beyond our wildest expectations. This is the most unfortunate thing. We came in here in good faith, uh, and, and, and we are entering into a, a, this kind of a, a discussion in the public view. But it's not bad, let, Nancy. Let us, no, uh, no, it's but called it, transparency. Uh, I wanted to kind of say, why do we have to do this in public? Because we have to contradict you. It was his insistence that the press stay there. Wow. And I think that he thought he could just get away with saying whatever he wanted to say yeah. without any challenge. Did it strike you at that moment, maybe he's not very smart? I mean, were you surprised? Well, no, I'm never surprised. <laughs> what I was, though, was that this looks like a person who's used to getting his own way. 
I am proud to shut down the government for border security, Chuck, because the people of this country don't want criminals and people that have lots of problems and drugs pouring into our country. So I will take the mantle. I will be the one to shut it down. I'm not going to blame you for it. The person who shuts the government down almost always loses. <laughs> just, and he did. And he did. And he did. Yes, and he know. did. That just got brought me back. I'm a little triggered. Is anyone feeling triggered? <laughs> yeah. um, but Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> she never gets triggered. She keeps her grace. Even in that moment, mm -hmm. you could really see the parallel. Um, sorry, between grace and gracelessness. She's graceful. Trump was a graceless, difficult, mean, racist, sexist, misogynistic, cruel, mean, undermining, unempathetic president. Mika, this woman is so far ahead of... <laughs> you write you about this, him. you read, and know your value and all this. She had her own schedule. She's not on somebody else's schedule. No. She was going to run before Steny Hoyer was going to run. She wasn't waiting her turn. She was yeah. going to run for speaker way back in 2001. <laughs> she had it all planned. And, and she had a schedule, and she kept to it. Mm -hmm. She won every one of the races. And yes, she did. Jonathan Capehart, your the, thoughts? The, the great thing about seeing what we just saw is it shows just how prepared mm -hmm. Speaker Pelosi is yes. going into a meeting like that. But also what you saw was her sort of her core strength. She is, she, her faith in the Constitution and her reverence for the Constitution, her reverence for the presidency. As she told you, she didn't want to have that conversation in public because it would force them to contradict the president. Mm -hmm. She respected the presidency. Um, when you're looking at Nancy Pelosi, you have to understand her reverence for the and faith in the Constitution is second only to her uh, her Catholic faith. She reveres both, and both of those things ground her and ground yes. her leadership. And Jackie, I think what, what I saw there from studying her in that moment, instead of playing for the cameras, she, she stuck to her core values and just spoke to the moment. Yeah, and you know, I, I have to say our, our colleague Paul Kane had a 65 minute interview with her after um, the speech and, and he said that she was still pretty steely behind closed doors. Um, she, it, you know, she wasn't weepy or emotional about the moment, which I think any person, man or woman, would yeah. would be really caught up in the emotion of it, yeah. um, but was very matter of fact. Uh, and she spoke about um, having uh, survivor's guilt, actually, about her husband. And that, to me, was oh. sort of one of the more shocking yeah. things, that Republicans' House, uh, future potentially House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, did not attend the speech. Stephen Miller, actually, I saw him jet into McCarthy's office um, just an hour before the speech started, and, and McCarthy never emerged to go onto the House floor to watch her. So Stephen and Miller's his advisor now, or what, what's going on? That's a que uh, still a question. What's going on? Got much clarity. The, the, the Apparently, they're friends. And, and they Different. were just mm -hmm. having a conversation, but um, there's a little bit more reporting to be done there. But uh, and Pelosi told Paul Kane that well, that's what hurt her most, that Republicans at the end of the day um, mm -hmm. were applauding this person who savagely attacked her husband, who is struggling, can only interact with people um, for limited moments, has to sit in dim rooms. Uh, he's recovering from a severe head and, and brain yeah. injury, and that uh, there is no empathy or, or, or sympathy that's been expressed by Republicans for what her and her family have gone through, her grandchildren. And and she talked about how, you know, she's still living in the house with her husband yeah. where he was attacked. And so oh, it's God. sort of this constant trauma and that she, that survivor's guilt for her not being there, uh, not not have been the one who this, this perpetrator was looking to attack, but but he couldn't find her and instead went after her husband, that that uh, has been extremely challenging for her. And, and so even in the context of that, that Republicans couldn't just uh, put the fight down for an hour. No. Um, so and, different and, and, from no. the way she and Democrats responded when Steve Scalise right. was shot right. and yeah. almost killed. Um, and she, I, th I think what she said, um, uh, she was, of course, she was 
outraged. She said, we're all one family. We're not, right. you know, Republicans and Democrats on this. We were all one family. She um, she did everything. Now, Scalise at least did attend. He attended half of it. Speech mm -hmm. or part of it. You know, yeah, I mean, come on, guys. Again, I ask again and again who raised, who raised you, men and yes, women so in the House and mm -hmm. the far right. I mean, would your mothers like your behavior today? This party, when it comes to policy, and I've talked about this before, it it's not exaggerating calling it the party of inhumanity, a party that has no sense of empathy or humanity when it comes to policy or behavior. I mean, this is a this is a party, and I'm talking about Republicans in the House, definitely not some members of the Senate who take a different route, like Mitch McConnell put out a very generous and appropriate and graceful statement. That's how it works, guys, in the House. But you tend to stay in this inhumane, cruel corner where you can carry out your policies, whether it be on abortion, wanting like a 13-year-old girl to be forced to have a baby of a rapist, or guns, where that's not where the country is. It's just not. But you stay there in that corner of cruelty and inhumanity and your behavior. Your behavior, I, I hate to sound like uh, mommy here or something, but their behavior is abhorrent. And their behavior after Paul Pelosi was attacked. <laughs> you know, I